Okay, let's uh, go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for joining us at Tech, Tech Meets Compassion, Robotics and AI in Long-Term Care. Um, in this engaging session, we will be delving into the transformation roles of robotics in assisted living facilities, exploring everything from implementation challenges to the tremendous potential for um, enhancement of residential care. Our esteemed panelists, um, Anissa Teller, Teeler, excuse me, and Marcus Kupchak will share their insights, experiences, and provide invaluable knowledge for anyone interested in this exciting intersection of healthcare and technology. Add your questions to the Q&A um, for them to be addressed at the end. We appreciate you joining us and attending our virtual event. I am gonna be your host today. Um, my name is Heather Klinghagen. I'm an assisted living um, robotics expert here at Robot Lab. Um, I will go ahead and introduce our panelists um, and let them tell a little bit about themselves and about their background. Um, first, we have Marcus Kubitschek. He is the director of the Monarch Robotic Program. Um, Marcus, I'll let you have the floor for a second. Hello, everybody. Um, I've been working with Monarch Healthcare Management for a little over five years now. Uh, my background is social work. I'm actively pursuing my LICSW to be a clinical social worker. And kind of my passion in robotics is just looking at how we can create just a health, healthy work culture and just use machines such as like floor cleaning robots, delivery systems, and even like the Pepper and Nao robots to promote social engagement within our communities. Um, we have 50 locations across the state of Minnesota, and we have robots in about eight to 10 of our facilities already, somewhere in there. Okay, awesome, yeah. thank you. All right, and next to Anissa Teeler, she's the executive assistant of Etros Management Firm. Um, Anissa, I will let you uh, give a little background on yourself. Hello, my name is Anissa. I've been with Etros for a little over a year now. We manage different senior living companies in the Washington area. We currently only have a robot at one of our Green Lake locations, but we're hoping to roll out a few more with over the next few years. Um, the one robot we do have is a cleaning robot, and so far we've really loved him. The communities have given him a name, but we're really hoping to go more electric in the future because we are still a little out of date at some of our communities. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Without further ado, let's get some uh, assisted cares. Most pressing question when it comes to robots and AI, and these questions will be for the panelists, of course. Um, can you share some initial reaction of residents when they first encounter the robots in their facilities? Um, Marcus, I'll let you go first. Initial reactions. We had residents that were beyond excited. Um, the way I like to answer this question is like, what would your first impression of seeing a robot be? Because like you can get a whole gamut of responses. We had residents shock and awe. We had some residents who are like, hmm, I don't know if that's right for me. Um, and then be wary. We also have the engineers of the world that will go into the rooms, grab a screwdriver and be like, can I take this <laughs> apart? How can I rebuild this? This is really interesting. So like you're going to see anything and everything when it comes to introducing this. At least that's been our experience over the last year and a half. Okay. Sounds great. Miss Teeler. That was pretty much the same thing. At first, most of our residents were a little weary of it. You know, they come from a different age with little to no technology, but they warmed up to him. Eventually, we had a resident, the same thing, that tried to take him apart. Um, and then we had another resident that said he was hungry and tried to feed him an orange. <laughs> we ended up having to have a meeting saying, Please don't mess with it, but their hearts were in the right place. Please don't feed the robots like a sign. Like yeah, a <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I didn't think we'd have to do that, but we did. Okay, awesome. And then our last panelist has just joined us, um, Sarah. She is Monarch's first robotics specialist. Um, hi, Sarah. How are you today? I'll let you uh, tell a little bit about yourself. Sarah? She might still be connecting to audio. Okay, that's fine. We'll hop on to the next question and then I'll let her uh, tell a little bit about ourselves. Um, how have the residents adapted to the presence of robots 
um, over time? Have you noticed any changes in their attitudes or behaviors just directly towards the robots? And Nissa, would you like to go first on this one? Sure, sorry, having technical difficulties. But yeah, they eventually warmed up the idea. We had one resident that was absolutely against it, but our executive director was willing to have the conversation with her saying, you know, this isn't something that's gonna hurt you. He's here to help you. And we even had a little get together with some of the ones that were more against it. And they were able to see the remote that comes with the robot. And that is completely man controlled. He's not gonna come into your room at night or anything. This is here to help you. And so I think we only have about 80 residents at that community. And I think I'd say 70 or more are warmed up to the idea. So we've had a lot of positive feedback and I think it's gonna go very well with them. Yeah, I think what it comes down to is just that repetition of education. We had some residents that were very um, adverse or concerned about working with a robot, but just by sitting there talking turning a robot on, powering it up, um, labeling the limitations, labeling what exactly what it can do, and just showing the residents that like, hey, this is here for safety. If you're ever concerned, here's where the emergency off switch is, like the red button on a lot of the machines, and just like giving them the comfort and control. But um, we also have a couple of residents for funds that hit the red button. So, you know, double-edged sword with that one. <laughs> okay, awesome. Sarah, are you here with us? Okay. All right. Um, next question. From your perspective, what are some challenges that facilities face when implementing these robots and how can we streamline that process? Either one of you can go first. <laughs> can you repeat that one more time? From your perspective, what are some challenges facilities face when implementing robots and how can that process be streamlined? Okay. Um, for me, uh, across all the locations, Wi-Fi. Make sure you have strong Wi-Fi. Make sure um, the layout of your facility is appropriate. Those little bumps that you don't even think about because your wheelchair can go over it perfectly. Those can be a little barrier in, um, when it comes to floor cleaning, when it comes to just navigation in general. Um, that's a big one. Awesome, thank you. I think the biggest one for us was having someone in administration that was more familiar with technology. Our executive director and our assistant executive director, they aren't too tech savvy. I actually had to go out there after the robot was implemented just to, I guess, reinstate how to use it and things like that. But Wi-Fi was also another big one. We had to get our Wi-Fi service afterwards. But um, I think the biggest one would be residents. We have, I don't know if you're all familiar, residents, they like to talk with each other. And if one person knows something, by the end of the day, the entire community knows something. So we had the rumor that robots were taking over the world. So I guess we should have gotten ahead of it and talked with the residents before we actually had the robot in the community. We've had some of the same rumors go around. So I'm glad to know it wasn't just us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it, like another theory is just setting really clear expectations. So like if you know your robot can, go in and vacuum this hallway and it's going to take this time if you can communicate that with your team that's incredibly successful it's giving knowledge and power and a sense of control in a situation that we don't necessarily have because we don't know how to work with a robot yet so like i think just as much over education i found to be quite successful in what we're doing at this time okay awesome Sarah, I think you are good now, right? Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, all right. 
Um, can you share, can you both share some specific practical benefits you've observed from incorporating rate, excuse me, robots into daily operations? Yeah, the stress reliever. Um, we have a floor cleaning robot that's been in one of our communities for going on six, seven months now. And once we broke through the adoption period and got comfortable with it, our team member is like, she's stressed out if she doesn't have the robot available. There was a uh, one week where the robot went down, had a couple of hiccups, like everything got supported super quickly and it was a great turnaround. But in that week, she was like, ah, oh, I have to go back to cleaning the common hallways. Ah, oh, I have to go back and do all this stuff. And for her, it was, it's just that repetition and like knowing that some days you might have to work, got a 10 hour work day and an eight hour, like eight hours worth of time. And her knowing that she doesn't have to worry about her hallways being cleaned anymore because they're already being taken care of at a, like a pretty good standard. And she might have to clean up the corners every other week or something like that. But like just her knowing that that stress is taken off of her has made it so much better for her. And those are her words, not mine. That's um, get that on a plaque. <laughs> <laughs> Stress relief. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree the same way. Ours is the mopping and sweeping robot. Um, and we recently had a change in our staffing input. The Green Lake owner decided he didn't want a housekeeper at five of the communities anymore. So now our caregivers have taken on that responsibility. So knowing them knowing they don't have to do this extra thing cuts out overtime. It cuts out a thing for them to have to do. And it saves some of our staff because not everyone was too happy about having to be a housekeeper now. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, how have robots been integrated into the daily routines of the residents? Um, can you provide a few examples? I think... Marcus, you may be able to speak to this a little bit more because you have Pepper now. Um, yeah. But definitely um, both of you. So, I, um, Anissa, do you want to go first? Sure, I can. I think mine will be a little shorter. But since he is mostly out in the evening time to try and avoid, you know, a lot too much interaction with the residents, we do have our evening residents that come out. We call them the night walkers. Um, they have made it a routine to sit and talk with him whenever he's on his little charging dock. You know, he's not doing anything. He's not really lit up, but I guess it's the fact that someone or something is there. I haven't really kind of cracked the code yet, but if it's a positive outcome for them, then I love it. That's awesome. That's he's awesome. a little friend. They're a little nighttime friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, speaking to floor cleaning solutions to start there. Um, I think our residents really like it as it's starting to come in and like the day-to-day -day operations. Um, the floor, uh, the housekeeping team member that's very successful with our whiz, um, she knows at 10 a.m. this hallway is going to be clear. So she can send the robot down this hallway because on that group, on that wing, she has a group of bingo players that go out or they go play canasta or whatever the game is. So like she's built it out into day-to-day -day living of when she knows there's open spaces for the floors or like low traffic areas looking at our peppers and nows and like to have a bit more of like the social interaction component to integrate something like that into day-to-day -day operations can be quite complicated because first you have to develop the sense of buy-in you have to build out the routine you have to supplement the routine there's there's so many variables behind that, but when we can get activities going and everything's just kind of fluid and in motion, the residents love it. We can run brief activities for 15, 20 minutes in a lull of like, if, uh, I don't know, bingo ends at 1 p.m. and 1.30, there's a nail uh, finger painting session or like finger uh, painting your nails. That's what we're going for. Like we have a half hour window right there where we can sneak a robot into it and just run an activity. So the residents aren't just necessarily hanging out, doing nothing or watching TV. They can have this little point of interaction. And then we have a team member with them doing that point of interaction. 
Now to integrate that into daily routine is complicated, but it's a great goal that we're striving towards getting to. Awesome. Great answers, guys. Um, on that note, have any of either of your facilities um, given any additional names or any additional human qualities of the robots <laughs> beyond their standard features? And how has this uh, impacted the residents' interaction? Um, yeah, so go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Anissa. <laughs> I wanted to go because uh, I've been calling him him this entire time. They named him Otto, O-T-T-O. And one of our residents put googly eyes on the back of him. And that's what that's what they look forward to talking to Otto in the evening. But I think giving him a name and a gender, you know, really helped with the rollout process and helping them understand that this is not something that's going to harm them. And this is something they can look forward to in the future. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so that's so cool. They put googly eyes on the back of him. <laughs> I'll try and get someone to send me a picture. Yes, please do. That will be awesome to see. <laughs> yeah, um, from our end, so we have um, 16 robots in eight locations. We went through a name competition for each one of them. And so we had residents go to our comp like go out and vote publicly of what they want their names to be. So we have a lot of rosies. We have salts. We have peppers. There's a Benji and a Boots combo. There's a Chip and Dale referencing the Disney cartoon. Um, there's a floor cleaning robot named Dodger. There's one called, there's a floor cleaner called Wiz. We have so many different names for our robots. And um, to get a little social worky, it was really interesting to see how um, gender was assigned to these things that don't necessarily have a gender because it's a machine. But like, that's a whole different conversation that we can step into. <laughs> Um, surrounding the pronouns of a robot but at the end of the day if the community is happy with it we're just going to roll with it because we want it to be integrated into their lives awesome all right could you share any feedback you know we've talked about the residents themselves a lot um could you share feedback from any residents families about the inclusion of robots in your facility yeah um we had a couple of isolated cases so far where we've had family members say, oh, you're taking innovation seriously. And like, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, obviously, but we actually had people choose to come to our facilities or choose to remain in our facilities for long-term care because of what we're offering, because we've taken that leap of faith into next generation care and that we are on the cutting edge of this. We've had a couple of female, like isolated instances where like, look, I want my father to go there. And there was one really cool conversation where I was doing a presentation last year on this. And in the conversation, it was out in the community. And they said, when they started the, conver the education, they're like, nope, there's no way mom's going there. By the end of the conversation, her and this, this woman and I, like we had a side note after the presentation and she got my contact information. And eventually this woman, her mother was referred to one of our communities because they saw the value of technology and like that we're going so far and above and beyond to care for our residents in this leap of faith. Awesome. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, it was a really cool moment. Uh, yeah. Because let's, I mean, that's what you want. You want them to feel yeah, It made it all worth it. Taking care of mom, right? Mm-hmm. I will have to say we had a similar type of experience. We had an evening tour one day and it was with a senior and her daughter who was also a little older and didn't really understand technology. So our executive director actually made that a point and the sit down point after the tour to you know explain this is here to help. This is going to maximize cleanliness. This is why our facility looks the way it does. And I think, and so does he, that that solidified the move in. So not only has it helped with revenue, it also <laughs> helps keep our facility looking nice. And I think another instance was when it wasn't a so positive one, it, another child of a resident that didn't really understand technology. And it was another kind of robots are taking over the world thing. And I actually got involved with this one. 
and had an entire conversation with, you know, really rolling out that this is here to assist. This is not here to replace anyone. This is not here to hurt your mother. This is here to help. And then I even shared pictures of the flooring, the before and after. I was like, you know, people can only do so much and we're only down to caregivers being housekeepers now. It's not gonna be perfect. So I think that really helped in that scenario. And the resident is still a resident there. So <laughs> I love that before and after you did there. It's a really good idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That really helped. You know, with seniors, there's gonna be crumbs, there's gonna be mud from outside during gardening. It's just things like that that really help iron out the process. Mm -hmm. And is it a big difference? Like, are you seeing a big difference in that? Like you said, the before and after picture is that like, obviously it's noticeable enough for a resident to see or someone, you know, bringing their mother to someplace like that to see the difference. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because like I said, our caregivers are our housekeepers now. And they're more focused on taking care of a resident, passing med, making sure Miss So and So gets her nine o'clock water. They're not too focused on making sure the hallways look nice, that the hallway was swept, the hallway was mopped. So this is what really helps us out. Awesome, great to know. Um, let's try this one more time. Sarah, are you there? Sarah. there no she's trying okay all right um let's see because I had a couple questions specifically for her um I might be able to help okay. answer some of those awesome. I've, yeah I did a um, lot of robots from, from a nursing perspective right because Sarah's um yep she is an RN correct um how have the robots impacted their daily routine and resident care as a nurse so Sarah unmuted, she might be able to speak, but as we're gearing up to that, we have not directly used a robot to do, to impact nursing per se. But I think in a way that specifically a pepper or a now have been able to reduce that stress in the um, workforce would be if a resident's asking a repetitive question mm -hmm. and like, this isn't necessarily where we're at, but like 2024 will be there. Like we could introduce chat GPT to one of these robots. Mm -hmm. So if a resident wanted to hear a funny joke or a funny story and just have a really simple conversation, um, think of your memory care residents who would be comfortable with a robot after they hit that learning curve. You could just sit and ask questions and make small talk all day when so much of what we want to do is be able to talk, but our nurses don't have space to hold that conversation. Because like Ms. Keeler said, you're more focused on your medication, that water pass, making sure you're doing your wound rest, all these other critical things. So if we can alleviate a bit of stress in the social realm, it can allow our team members to have more space to get their high priority tasks done. Awesome. Sarah? Nope, so no Sarah. All right. Um, how does both of for both of you, how does your maintenance staff perceive the robots? Um, can you share their thoughts on the ease of maintenance and any challenges or fears they have with the robots? Ms. Taylor. Sure, I'll go. Um, actually, our maintenance director is the one that we've designated to be over the robot. And actually, there was a little hiccup last week with something with the navigation. I'm still not exactly sure, but we got it ironed out. It was just a matter of communication and letting me know so I can let you guys know something was wrong. But I found it was very easy to get the process rolled out. No one had to even come out to mess with the bot like I thought. It was all online. So that was very easy. I thought I'd have to go out there to make sure things were working well, but I didn't. It was just a matter of sending an email and then things were back up and working. Our maintenance director, he thought it was very simple. I let him know, hey, just shoot them an email and copy me on there to let them know it's not working. And then that'll be back up. And he actually thought that was a lot easier. He had been calling a number. I'm still not sure who he was calling. The number didn't go anywhere, but we got it worked out and I, I i actually really appreciate this because it's a lot easier than sitting on hold 
using an online portal. Just It's just shooting an email stating what's wrong with it. And then you guys got it fixed immediately. Awesome. Yeah, so um, I think to answer that question, it goes back to employee wellness, that retention model. At first, some of our team members are very apprehensive about it in the housekeeping department because there was that impression of, oh, I'm going, to, am I going to lose my job due to this? And it's like, well, cleaning a floor is 5% of what you actually do. We know there's so many more valuable things that you can do and we can alleviate that stress. And I think as we've been able to implement and uh, speaking a bit more to the CC1, because there's a lot of technology behind that robot, um, being able to have the team members be able to customize their settings and change it out and tweak things. If they're like, oh, I didn't like wearing that display. And we're like going in there and like making all these little modifications. It's been a really cool point of conversation, not only for just the employees, but like as they're talking amongst each other, as they're educating residents, just really like these improv conversations. Um, I think it's been a really cool opportunity to grow and explore while being able to challenge our team members to do more with what they have because we've given them an awesome tool. Awesome. Okay, we have a few more questions and then we will go to the QA questions. All right. Um, can you share any interesting or unexpected anecdotes about the residents' interactions with robots? Any funny stories besides putting googly eyes on the back? Yeah, I got one that kind of just blew me away. I was about, I don't know, three months into um, a robotic situation. And like, as we just started, and there was one woman who came out of her room, looked at her robot and said, huh, I guess I don't have to talk to humans anymore. And I was like, what? And she's like, no, 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 I'm an introvert. And I don't want to talk to anybody. Give me the robot. This is great. And I was like, well, that is, I never in a million years could have expected that's where one of my early conversations was going to go. And I was like, no, that's not what we're doing. And she was a little upset with me because a robot couldn't just do everything in her life. And it was, that was, yeah, that was a mind boggling one. That's awesome. Firstly, I love that about the senior that was an introvert. I personally right? really relate with that. <laughs> But one of our residents, aside from the one that tried to feed him an orange, we had one of our night walkers. She loves to knit. She loves to make sweaters. She makes little booties for one of the shelters nearby. She tried to make him an entire outfit. And she asked one of our caregivers to help her with measuring his dimensions so she could get like his body size right. And she was also upset at the fact, you know, we can't put clothes on him you know you can talk to him you can follow him around you can do all that but please don't touch him <laughs> but she ended up making the outfit anyway we didn't put it on him but she made it and that was you know enough for her maybe just a little hat <laughs> <laughs> we've definitely dressed up robots before for competitions oh i love that yeah just okay. make sure they're off when you do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, we got her. <laughs> Yay. Apologies for that. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, I guess I'll ask you the question that I asked Marcus. Um, from a nursing perspective, um, well, let me let you introduce yourself first. Um, you work with Marcus. You were one of the very first, uh, you were the very first robot specialist um, with Correct. Monarch, and then I will let you go ahead and give a little bit about yourself. About myself, I've had over 25 plus years in the nursing field in various public and private sectors and different organizations. And um, the robot specialist thing was something totally out of my comfort zone, and I wanted to give it a try. And I'm happy I did. Awesome. Okay, so I will ask you the question that I had asked uh, Marcus earlier from a nursing, from a nurse's perspective, um, how have mm -hmm. the robots impacted um, your daily routine and resident care, if at all? From the nursing standpoint, not so much. Um, 
with the robots that we did have, um, there wasn't a whole lot of nursing involvement other than, um, you know, asking the resident if they'd like to spend time with the robot. Mm -hmm. But with daily cares, um, other daily activities, there wasn't much of an impact. And I see um, the robots as a great potential for helping with that in the future. Awesome. And then, so in the future, let's go to that question. So looking mm -hmm. to the future, how do each of you um, envision the role of robots in assisted living facilities involving? Like, is it not going to happen? How do you see it going forward? Your take on it. Sarah, we can start with you. Okay. I see it as being more involved. However, there needs to be a lot of collaborative work and buy-in from many different individuals within the facility. So if there's one or two people that are, so to say, holding up the show, that's really going to impact the program and how those robots will help and assist in assisted living communities or long-term care centers. Okay. Ms. Taylor? Yeah, I'll kind of piggyback off of Sarah. I really do see them being more involved in the future, especially seeing what they can do now and seeing what's being rolled out now. We have a McDonald's here in Fort Worth that is fully ran by robots. I haven't been yet. I've just seen it on Facebook. I'm not too big of a fan of McDonald's, but we do have other restaurants where the waitresses are robots. They do talk and they're friendly little servers. So I see something kind of like that in the future, kind of maybe a caregiver robot, maybe a med tech robot. The way I've seen them in the hotels is there's a little face at the top and then there's a little tray that has whatever room service you ordered that says, thank you for your order, have a great day. So maybe something like that, thank you, please take your meds, have a great day. So something like that. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, piggybacking off of that, I think the sky's the limit with what we're going to see with robotics over the next decade. Um, I know one of the major barriers is being able to actually like walk. And like, I know Tesla, Google, all the major players in the world are in like this robot space race to create that model like super successfully. But um, just like looking at healthcare specifically, I could see automating medications or like augmenting the way we deliver like across the entire industry, like a full, like almost revolution of how tech can work and like this collaborative function. And I'd really stress like just the collaboration or like a cobot, for example, because like we always need the human intervention and we always need that human and that personalistic touch. But if I didn't have to go 150 feet down a flight of stairs and another 150 feet to ever have to get to the laundry room to grab towels or linen again, I'm gonna take you up on that offer or to go grab that little bit, like an extra roll of toilet paper, whatever, med insert nursing material. Like if I don't have to do that anymore, I'm gonna be pretty happy because then I can spend more face time with my customer, my client, my community member. Awesome, sounds great. Um, anything you guys want to add or say before we get to the Q&A session? I, this is Sarah, and I'd just like to add on to what Marcus was saying, that the robots are really going to help take those tasks off of nurses so that, again, you can spend more of that face-to-face -face time because a lot of People and families, they say, you know, the nurses, they're always looking at the computer. They're always, you know, busy. You know, they're not really a lot of face-to-face. -face. And I think incorporating that technology into that will help bring that face-to-face -face personal contact with individuals um, even more so. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate that. All right. So... Let's get to our Q&A questions. Okay. First, we have Dan that asked, are the robots comforting to residents or do the robots scare the residents? 
I can answer to this one. At first, I wouldn't say scared. They were more so nervous because it's something they hadn't seen before. We have residents that haven't even seen an iPhone before. So if you saw something rolling around, sweeping and mopping, you'd be a little uneasy as well. It's just like we established earlier, it's the overeducation, letting them know this is something that's positive, not negative. You know, the slow introduction, not just, you know, throwing it out in front of them, letting them know. But we did have some that were a little uneasy at first. Yeah, I think you answered that like just super well for the record. It is very uneasy that first month, but like as people get more and more comfortable with it, it's just part of the routine. Um, and then residents will start pushing boundaries. Like uh, with both our WIS and our CC1, we have a couple of ambitious residents who will like try to cut it off and like get in their way. And they're like, I'm going to trick the robot or I'm going to get the robot stuck. And like it gets to the point where it's just turning into a game and it's a form of entertainment as this little cleaning robot is struggling to go down the pathway, the straight line, because you have four different residents over the span of 100 feet messing with it <laughs> and then you get a weird report and then the next day you just clean it properly <laughs> you get a i haven't been able to clean here 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 yeah. here why did my 20 minute route take 35 minutes today i wonder um to add to that um a lot of the residents were a bit hesitant about seeing the robot as well you know, some of them kept a great distance from it and maybe looked at the robot from afar. And the more often I had the robot out, the more they got a little bit closer, a little bit closer, became a little bit more curious about, you know, what, what is this? Sorry, and then I took that as an opportunity to, um, you know, explain to them, hey, this is Pepper. This is what Pepper does. Mm -hmm. You make a really good point that I'd like to bring up. There are two very different reactions versus a floor cleaning robot and a humanoid robot. Yes. People are mm -hmm. much more receptive to a re like an industrial grade Roomba versus the human, the four and a half foot tall humanoid robot. There is a, right. oh, that thing can clean. That's cool. Versus, oh, there's moving arms and it can do all these different motions. So like people are a lot more cautious around the humanoid robots, but they warmed up. And they like have. An equal amount they have. Time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Awesome, guys. Um, I have an anonymous attendee here. How do robots help maintain or improve the cognitive functions of residents? This is Sarah, and the robots help um, maintain the cognitive focus of the residents by. You know, you can program them to the robot to, you know, the day, the time, whatever it may be, that will help the cognitive level. And just to have that interaction, that helps mm -hmm. to maintain that level with the resident. So I think, yeah, um, I think there's so much potential, like Sarah said, to be able to use a robot as just a simple reorientation tool. Like, um, I don't know if there's uh, either the individuals that are connected to this chat right now are nurses, but like you learn reorientation, like, oh, date, place, and time. Like, let's use it. Let's talk about, like, let's label where we're at to kind of continuously remind people. You could throw in an AI, like chat GPT, for example, like as, or something equivalent, like as it gets further down. And there's so many different um, cognitive well-beings that you could like, like these possibilities to implement and just lay the foundation to like create this as really good reorientation tool. Mm -hmm. It was a little redundant there, but yeah. Yeah, and I think with ours, since it is just the cleaning robot with our memory care residents, memory care residents, they need a routine. They're going to see this at 3 p.m. They're gonna do this at 4 p.m. And if anything is out of that, then it's a problem. So knowing that we can schedule the time for the robot to be out and about really helps them. They're going to expect to see Otto at 6 p.m. and they're going to expect him to be on his dock at 9 p.m. So that really mm -hmm. helps them with their routine. Can I ask a question? 
to Mist Healer? Sure. How, <laughs> oh, yeah, I would like to know how how are the residents in the memory care union unit adopting to a floor clean robot like that? We have only 15 in our memory care portion of our community, and I okay. say eight or nine are okay with him right now. And then the remaining okay. are still kind of keeping their distance. We did have one that had a, yes, yes. But like I said, seeing that he's only going to be out at 6 p.m. and he's going to be back at 9 p.m. really helps them that he's not going to be you know, wandering around into their rooms or anything. He's only going to be in the common areas from this time mm -hmm. to this time. You can expect to see him there at this time. And if you have a problem, you know, you can let us know, but he's not going to mess with you. But we did have one memory care resident, you know, she has a little bit of an Alzheimer's. So she was actually talking to it like it was her son. And that was really, really heartwarming to me because her mm -hmm. son has passed away and she doesn't have any more family. So that is, I think, our best story. Oh, I'm gonna tear up. <laughs> Meaningful connections with a robot. Oh. Did not expect that to happen, but it's yeah. wonderful. That's, um, yeah, that's, that's something I did not expect to hear on this call today and don't think I've ever heard is a meaningful connection with a robot, um, but that is awesome. All right, so next one, please explain. Oh, well, this is more of a me question. Um, please explain the initial cost and ongoing expenses of these robots. Um, initial cost, um, it's an anonymous attendee, initial cost. Um, if you would like to be more than happy to reach out to me, I can help you with initial cost, but you guys can definitely speak to um, any ongoing expenses outside of the cost of a, just you pay the cost for the robot monthly or you buy it outright, but outside of that, what guys, are you guys seeing any expenses? Um, yeah, uh, the only expense I can think of would be like the consumable brushes or something like that, but I know that's part of like the initial supply. Um, whatever the cost is of your cleaning liquid for your floors, that's about it. So, I mean, it's all pre-built in costs yeah. and you can shape your ROI to make this a pretty advantageous decision. Awesome. Yeah, I'll have to agree with that. We haven't spent anything extra that we wouldn't have spent beforehand other than the robot itself you know cleaning supplies mm -hmm. uh it sweeps it mops whatever cleaner we want to use that's pretty much the expense we're using just the cleaner yeah and if i'm really stretching maybe like a five dollar cheesecloth to clean the filters every so often but again yeah nothing significant okay yeah no awesome um, last question here. How do robots fit into the current regulatory framework for long-term care facilities? Who so asked the, that question? It's You're like my favorite attendee. person ever. <laughs> Thank you, anonymous attendee. That is a wonderful question. So if that's all right, I'd like to nerd out for a moment. The framework isn't there yet. There needs to be a framework. So right now what um, we've been doing, because like, apparently I dig into regulations for fun, is following standard protocol. So like um, a traditional floor scrubber, let's look at that. You can follow all the rules and regulations or like the sanitation, how often you need to clean it, the frequency of that. And then like you can compile that with like an infection model on top of it to really just look at what do you need to do to make sure that this is a, like this is appropriate. Um, in the event that COVID's in a facility, you stop for a little bit because it can kick up um, air, like it can just kick up dust and it can kick up stuff like that. So there really isn't regulations out there with it. I We've started conversations um, in the state of Minnesota and just like asking like, is there something like this? Is there a committee? What can we do? Like there's, yeah, long story short, there's nothing. So it's using the current regulations and the current lens and really just being transparent with whatever state you're in and saying like, hey, we want to do this. We want to pioneer this. Can you collaborate with us so that we can be the exemplar instead of being the reason why the rule got written? We want to be the reason the rule was prevented versus, oh, we really messed up and now we have to write a rule about it. Awesome. 
I love the way you worded that, Marcus. I'm not <laughs> sure if anyone here is familiar with Washington and their WAC, the Washington Administration Code, but there is a rule for literally anything, anything down to what you're wearing, down to how many people are in the building, yep. anything. We had a state representative come out during the evening time and everyone was on edge because the bot was out. I was like, well, I panicking on my computer. I was like, I don't see any wax for this. I was like, I'm, I'm not sure. And she actually complimented the robot. She was like, I think you guys are doing great trying to maximize cleanliness. And then it did come down to like COVID and germs being spread. She's like, this is a great idea. You guys are doing mm -hmm. great. So I think in our situation, it actually gave us the leg up in the situation rather than a leg down. I actually agree to that. Um, we had robots on site during a federal survey. So you have your state surveyors, and then if your building is consistently doing really well, you get audited by the federal government. So we had federal surveyors coming in and looking at these robots. They asked a whole bunch of questions, we were able to answer them. And the conversation ended with them saying like, well, we need to report what we saw to our boss here. Like we haven't seen anything like this. And like, we want to know more so that they can get ahead of it and start to begin to develop the rules, the precautions and the implementation. Like, yeah, there's nothing out there. But like, no, that's really the, cool. Yeah, when the state had come in and I was talking with one of the, the surveyors and uh, she's like, I've never heard of a robot specialist before. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So yeah, um, sometimes when you're so in I the think world there's, Oh, go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, um, I was just going to say that there's a lot of potential to build build something that will work and it will be for the positive. Yeah, so I think when it comes to innovation like this, we're ahead of the regulations, truthfully. We're, yeah. we're ahead of anything. So it's operating in your own moral compass and looking like um, when we make these decisions, it wasn't just the social worker doing this like it was the social worker that went to operations that went to nursing that went to environmental services that went to culinary that went to literally every department to create a policy and obviously it starts with nursing with the infection but like if you look at a bella robot like a delivery system it's going to be completely different than how you use a floor cleaning robot if you look at a humanoid robot both those interactions are going to be completely different so it's about going to each department and figuring out what is appropriate in their regulations and just kind of creating this mold outside of it. Yep. Awesome. Uh, any last parting words um, from any of you that you would say to any assisted living facilitators or directors or whatever, they're on the call? Be the early yeah. adopter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, get the robot. It'll help. Yeah. It's going to be tough at first, but push through the first month, month and a half, and it'll be so worth it. If you find that one team member that's like head over heels for it, empower them, let them be the champion. It is a world of difference. If you have one person champion it versus somebody, it's like, eh, it's part of my job. Like, right. find the team member that's passionate. Awesome. Uh, I I would say that go for the robot. Don't, you know, if you have any hesitations, look past that and see the positive and the potential in having that in your facility. The way my boss, a gentleman named Dan Stripmotter, he's one of our vice presidents, the way he describes it is he's like, I have looked into the future and I can't go back. Just once you start dreaming about the possibilities of five years from now, what these machines can do, it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. And if you can begin to adopt that model now, the payout down the road will be so significant that like it can't even be like, you can't quantify it at this point because we don't know how impactful it's going to be. But it, the robots aren't leaving. They're not leaving. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I would like to thank all of our panelists today. Um, once again, thank you for joining us in pushing the boundaries of innovative care. Um, thank you guys once again, and thank you for being a part of our webinar today. 
Of course. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you for having us. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You too.